and welcome to the speaker series. This is um, March, so it's our Women's History Month, and we've got three speakers for Women's History Month, and the first is Shakina Berber, which I'm going to introduce right now. So, and she's standing right here, lovely Shakina, right behind me. Um, quick introduction here. Shakina has been writing and telling stories since the third grade. She has a master's in library and information science and a maestria, maestria in women's spirituality. Shakina authored columns for the San Francisco New Mission News, La Postmodern Curandera, and The Coconut Chronicles. Her published works include novels, Santora, The Good Daughter, The Mermaid Girl, and a collection of short stories, The Only Female Crossdresser in Memphis. She was a co-editor for Dispatches from Lesbian America, and in addition to writing, Shakina is a reference library for our a reference librarian for our own Merritt College and a traditional Mexican healer. So please welcome our lovely presenter, Shakina. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> now. Let's see, I click on this yeah, and share. then go right back here. Okay, share. Oh, yeah, share screen. Mm -hmm. And then there's blue button. And then I do slideshow. Hang on. Slideshow. Slideshow. Mm -hmm. One more time. And then beginning. Perfect. Okay. Okay, thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm going. I'm going to do a, a presentation on La Llorona. I've written a novel based on this story, which is finished but not published. Uh, I created this presentation, the original pr presentation for my Spanish class at Laney a few years ago, and I've developed it a lot more for this presentation. So uh, that's why some of the slides might be a little weird. So let's get started. Um, right here, right this way. Okay. No. I'll come right this way. Yeah. Oh, what about this? You could do that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. All right. So uh, my presentation is going to be about the origin story, its background, uh, the mythological connections, related superstitions, and the political isms that I believe contributed to the tragedy, followed by a brief synopsis of my novel. So uh, the origin story, for those who don't know, La Llorona is the villainous of a ghost story that originated in Nuevo España, Mexico, of the so-called New World probably sometime in the 15 or 1600s. Her name means the woman who weeps. This famous ghost, this is a famous ghost story that has spread all through the Southwest US and through Central America and even down into South America. And there are many versions I chose to develop the version I first heard, which was told to me by a woman from the state of Guanajuato, Mexico. Okay. So the basic storyline goes something like this. In the nascent city of Mexico, young woman Maria Luisa, who is always said to have been very beautiful, was the mistress of the captain of the Spanish army. And Maria Luisa was a mestiza. She was half, Mex uh, half Spanish and half Indian. The uh, captain of the Spanish army was a full-blooded Spanish. At first, he was obs uh, obsessed with the beautiful uh, Maria Luisa. Marisa, Maria Luisa had children by him. Some people say it was two boys. Some versions say that she had three children. I've even heard people say that she had three boys. And once in a while, a girl is mentioned. Okay. 
Okay, one day the Capitan stopped coming to see Maria Luisa. And he found someone of his own class to marry and told Maria Luisa he was going to take the children to live with him and his new wife. Uh, so, of course, Maria Luisa, humiliated and furious, took the children to a river where she killed them. Some versions say she threw them in the river and they drowned. I think that's probably most the most popular uh, story. Uh, when I first heard this story, I was told Maria Luisa chopped them up and threw the pieces in the water, after which she drowned herself. Okay, so the legend goes on to say that God punished Maria Luisa by putting a curse on her to wander forever searching for her children. Uh, and she will never rest until she has found every piece of bone, every single hair, and every drop of blood of her children's bodies. I've collected Mexican folk tales of the supernatural for more than 30 years now. And this tale was told to me the most often with slightly different details. Sometimes when people were telling me about this story, for example, a husband and wife, they would argue about the details. So there's uh, Maria Luisa, and notice her uh, veil. It sort of looks like a tail, and I'll, ex I'll explain that in an upcoming video. Okay, nobody knows whether the tragedy of La Llorona really occurred. In my opinion, I think something like this did happen, but it wasn't written down and the story was only passed down orally. In this slide, we see a 16th century drawing of La Llorona. You can see tears on her face and over the head is a fragment that says, uh, of a sentence that says, oh, mis, mis hijos, donde? which translates to, oh, my children, where? And I wasn't able to find a, a picture that had the rest of that sentence, but it's a bit of evidence that suggests this le legend was already in existence in the, 16th, in the 16th century. And as I mentioned, I think that there are elements of truth in this story because we have a name, a location, and a time period when it happened. So a legend is something that, that uh, a legend is what we have when stories that might have some truth are passed down by word of mouth. Okay, so Siwakwadal. So this is Siwakwadal. There is, um, excuse me, there's a Mexica myth that before the conquest of Mexico, a woman came out of the, the water that surrounded the city of Denochtitlan, which became Mexico City after the conquest. Her name was Siwakwadal, which means serpent woman. And you can see that on as uh, the headdress of, of the one on the left is um, there's, there's a double-headed snake. And also notice that her mouth is open. And I, I thought they were in that she's and in, um, I interpreted this as as the act she's in the act of uh, crying out her warnings. So she was said to be dressed all in white with a papoose on her back, that instead of a baby held a sacrificial knife. She wandered through the marketplace, crying out, "Oh my children, beware! The end is near," foretelling the fall of the Aztec Empire. The Mexica believed this, this woman was the goddess Siwakwadal, who was the protectress of the Aztec people. And so the tail, that's what I was referencing, the tail in the other slide, the, the, um, her rebozo, her shawl, looks like a tail in the water. Okay, there is a Greek myth, Medea, that is similar to the La Llorona story. Medea was a Greek princess and a sorceress. Her lover, Jason, had put her aside to marry a young priestess and to add insult to injury. He was going to take their two sons to live with him. And I think he even told 
uh, Medea that to why doesn't she go back to her like where she came from? Uh, it is another island, another Greek island. So Medea killed her two sons to keep that from happening. Maria Luisa has also been called a witch, and she's been identified with the devil, and, and an owl or a decolote mala, an evil owl, which some people believe have the ability to turn into a human form. There's also lechuzas, uh, who are witches who have the body of an owl and a human head. La Llorona is believed to lure, lure children into water where they drown, um, either out of confusion uh, that they are her children or out of jealousy for, for other people's children. She said that uh, to cat, she is said to kidnap bad children and often plays the role of a Mexican boogie woman, which parents used to threaten their children with saying that La Llorona will come to take them away if they're disobedient. La Llorona had a connection to water because of the way she killed her children and because of her unceasing weeping. And because the moon has an influence on, on water, I think that's why she's also connected to the moon because sometimes she's said to appear with the full moon and other times she can't allow the light of the full moon to fall on her. So the connections to other folkloric uh, monsters, um, I always also found uh, connections between her and a horse monster, a Mexican horse monster know, known as the Shtaibai that originated in the region of the Yucatan of Mexico. The monster has the form of a beautiful woman from behind with long black hair flowing down her back. She lures men, usually drunk, into the jungle. Sometimes she has sex with them first and then kills them. Sometimes she simply turns around and reveals her true self, which is a monster with a fearsome horse's head with sharp teeth and she jumps on the victims and devours them. As I mentioned earlier, the story of La Llorona has spread even to the Southwest of the United States where there's a folkloric fi female figure also associated with water known as the donkey woman of, of San Antonio, Texas. She lives under a bridge by a creek and I recently read a story about her and La Llorona fighting over a victim. So they definitely know about each other. Isms. So this, the idea for the book was developed developing for a long time. When I was studying at Jocotepec, Jalisco, some children who knew I was interested in Mexican folktales took me to the Catholic church in town, and they pointed out a shrine to me that had an angel and three children, and they told me that that was the angel who took La Llorona's children to heaven uh, after the murders, and it was two boys and one girl. And being very familiar with my own mestizo heritage and its preferential treatment of the males, I know that the boys of a family are always more important than the girls. And I couldn't imagine that it was any different and it was probably a lot worse in the 16th century. And so I asked myself, if there was a girl, why is she so often left out of the narrative? So then I began to think, what if La Llorona had three children and only killed the boys and her reasoning uh, being that it was only the sons that mattered to the father uh, and not the girl. And so if the girl survived, what story would that would, would she tell? And so the story began to unfold in my imagination. Thus, the isms that led to the tragedies. Okay, so first of all, there was colonialism. Colonialism occurs when one nation subjugates another, conquering its population and, and exploiting it, often while forcing its own language and cultural value, values upon the people. That's from National Geographic. So Cortes, uh, well, actually, this is uh, Cristobal, Cristobal Colon, Christopher Columbus. Um, and uh, And then um, Cortez, they came, they they come in. 
um, and they came. They come in telling pe the native people everything they know is wrong, and takes whatever they want, kills them, and forces them to convert and learn Spanish. And incidentally, incidentally, the world word colonialism comes from the Spanish name of Christopher Columbus, which is uh, in, in Spanish is Cristobal Colón. So colonism. Oops. Whoops. 24. So the Spanish had a complicated caste system of racism with 16 permutations of Spanish, Native, and African blood. And even though La Llorona was half Spanish, she still wasn't of his social class because she had Indian blood. And that was the classism that contributed to the tragedy along with the racism and classism is sexism. When Maria, Maria Luisa no longer had, was of no longer of use to the Spanish Capitan, he brushed her aside to marry a woman of his own class. And, <clears throat> excuse me, ageism goes hand in hand with sexism because by the time Maria Luisa had born three children, she was about 28 years old. Okay, so at the beginning of colonization, there weren't very many Spanish women who came to the New World. So the Spanish invaders raped, took concubines, and married the native women. And this is one, an, one form of, uh, of colonialism. And then another form is giving limited or no rights to the native people of a land. And women have even less rights being considered to be the property of men. men. And this was the pol the plight of uh, the half native La Llorona. Six. At the beginning of uh, no, sorry, uh, for some time now, women authors have been telling the stories of women who are only briefly met mentioned in mythology or legends. Some samples are Circe by Madeline Miller, uh, Medusa by Natalie Haynes, and the Penelope uh, as Margaret Atwood's answer to Homer's Iliad. So I decided I would do something similar uh, by telling La Llorona's story from the point of view of her daughter who survived the, the slaughter. And I thought there was a whole lot more at play there beside betrayal, rage, and revenge. So this is what I explored in writing the book. The story begins with a narrative by Dolores, the daughter, the much put upon daughter of La Llorona, who is now 79 and a nun, deciding to write her mother's story and put the record straight, as there are so many true untruths and superstitions that have attached to the story over the 68 years that have ensued in, since the tragedy. The narrator, whose name is Dolores, mean, which means sorrows in Spanish, is creatively and spiritually gifted. She has profound dreams uh, and experiences, and, and, and she experiences visions. My theory is that La Llorona had three children, including a daughter, and that daughter survived because she was a, a girl, because La Llorona knew that the father would only carry, care about the boys. Dolores states the tale by describing her mother, the most beautiful woman in Nuevo España, as a woman who is selfish, rageful, and unpredictable, who suffers from depression and may be bipolar, a proud woman who has been waiting in vain for a marriage with the captain that will legitimate their, uh, legitimize their relationship and their children. So, uh, Dolores Dolores finds her mother one morning hungover and still drinking after a lavish affair the night before during which she and the captain entertained the archbishop and several other dignitaries from the Spanish court. Her mother tells her da uh, daughter the true story of how she met the captain. It's a story of violence, revenge, and witchcraft. <coughs> Excuse me. After the banquet of the night before, her mother now understands the captain will never marry her. 
From there, the narrative leads heads inexorably toward the murder of Dolores' brothers. See, after the tragedy, the story turns to what happens to Dolores, her father, and her imprisonment by an envious stepmother. But the story always comes back to her mother, uh, sightings and hauntings, as well as stories beginning to be told about her mother being a ghost, of having magical powers and of being a witch. After escaping her stepmother, Dolores goes to live in a convent where one day her mother shows up. Dolores confronts her about the murders of her brothers, and the story ends with a surprising change of heart. And that's all I'm going to say about the story. Okay. So, so that brings us to the end of uh, my presentation. Um, this is a painting I did of La Llorona, and I actually did a, a, another painting, um, but I it, it came out blurry, and uh, I couldn't seem to fix it. But this, so it says, estoy medio harta de agua, dijo la señora de Llorona. And it's kind of a joke. Um, she says, I'm half sick of water, said the lady of Llorona, which is based on um, Sir Alfred Tennyson's poem, uh, a line that comes from his poem about the Lady of Shalott. And uh, she was also connected with water. And that's the end. So. Um, uh, are there, uh, uh, I thought that I could talk about, before asking if there's any questions, I could talk a little bit about, uh, um, oh, what, to, how, how much time do we have? Do you want to stop share? So you yeah. Can, you can see everybody. Just click that. Stop, yeah, stop share. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Let's see. So in addition to all the different versions that I heard about La Llorona, I also did a lot of research about the history of Mexico City and the native people who were on the site before the conquest. Um, and I looked at a lot of maps. And of course, it's easy to find things on the internet. Um, and I used databases like, like those of Peralta and the public library, and of course, actual books. And uh, um, I, it took me it took me about a year to write the book, and then another year to do the uh, the rewrites and to edit it. And um, I, but I only wrote about it was during the pandemic, and I only wrote about uh, anywhere where from two to three hours, four hours a day. And so that's. That's the end of my presentation. And um, are there any questions? I don't have audio on my computer, but can you tell us why this topic area interested you? Let's see. Did this degree to write a whole book? Uh, yes, because I thought that, that there was more to the story besides her being a jealous cat and trying to get revenge on her husband. And as I as I mentioned, the uh, the native people had a lot of uh, were um, the the native people who had been were being colonized at the time that this story happened must have had a lot of rage and uh, felt very disempowered, and so I thought that that's I think that's where it started. I started to think that they must have. Uh, there, there was there was a lot more to the story than just a story of of jealousy and and revenge. So I've been in Mexico several times, and everybody tells me about La Llorona. So that idea of her coming from this, you know, sixteenth century. and then all the way to present, it's still a very present um, what do you want to call it? A mythology or a, a based on reality, but it continues and can, continues. And um, you know, they just did a horror film called La Llorona. So this this notion of La Llorona continues down culture to culture. And I noticed that it is used to scare children. Um, so 
you know, the boogeyman is we have the boogeyman, but I don't think that's based on a real thing. But La Llorona seems to be based on a real story. But it's so interesting how it's persisted, uh, you know, through different cultures and different decades and centuries. It's it is very rich. And there are I've read many stories that people have spun the tale in different ways. For example, I saw a play and it featured the the husband or the boyfriend as the as the actual murderer of the children. And another story I read was La Llorona appears every time a woman is about to do something bad, something wrong, and she she comes to warn them. So it's it it is it is a, like a living legend uh, or a ghost story that's very rich and and people have have used it as a springboard to, uh, to to tell other stories or to make there's also a lot of artwork and as Marla said there's 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 a, there's actually a lot of films both in English and in Spanish on La Llorona any other questions I have a question. Uh, is it another aspect of the story that, or maybe what keeps it alive partly, that the sound of the wind or something is often attributed to La Llorona? I'm having some memory about that from my- Yes, job. and also sometimes um, certain kinds of wind and certain kinds of, of uh, rain, storms. And when I was in Mexico, uh, when I was studying in Mexico, I was there for a while in the town of Jocotepec, uh, in the state of Jalisco. There was a terrible storm one night, and then in the about three o'clock of in the morning, all the animals. I was woken by all these animals. All it sounded like all the animals in town were howling and braying and crowing, and I thought, "What is going on?" and I was told the next day that La Llorona had passed by. And I unfortunately didn't, to tell the truth, I couldn't make up a story about it, but um, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear her voice myself that time. But uh, yes, there are, she does, there are connections. And I do that in my book. There's one point where she, where there's, there's the rain begins and it seems like La Llorona is, is crying and, and the wind is, is rising. It's at the burial of her boyfriend, her former boyfriend. Is there any historical writing that you've read that mentions that perhaps the 16th century figure was um, depressed or, as you said, bipolar or postpartum, I don't know anything. Is there something that suggests, I know you put that in your story. I'm just wondering no. if this was a real person, if there was any reference in his historical writings about that. I, I didn't see anything about that. And I didn't see anything about her, uh, uh, a suggestion of her being, having, having mental illness. So that was all my, my invention. There's a comment in the chat from Elena. She said, Nicaragua has part of this history. Actually, my city's name is Tihuacoa. <laughs> it's Siwakwazal? Really? I'll show you what she wrote oh. in the chat. Right there. Oh, Siwakwazal. Interesting. Uh, um, Yes, as I as I mentioned at the beginning, this this legend has has spread to the southwest, all the way to the southwest U.S. and all the way down through Central America and South America. Thank you. Since she might also be linked to the um, oh, I don't know how to say the name. Uh, and Siwakwatl was a, a, a woman who had a lot of power, obviously. Would there be, did you read any reference to that? Maybe it's a fear of her, not the fear of um, like 
like her madness, but in, instead it's that her power that maybe it's what people fear. The power of um, La Llorona? La Llorona, who's linked back to the actual Siwakwadl, if there's... Hmm, I never thought of that. Um, they, they thought she was a, they, she was reviled as a witch uh, after, after the murders. Um, but I never, I never made that connection myself. That's interesting. Well, when I was in Guatemala, they also talked about La Llorona. So it's definitely, she is definitely persistent. Absolutely. Any other questions? Same history, but the name is the Mokuana. Mokuana. There's there's another story. If you if you read, you can uh, ask her to comment on that. Would you uh, comment on that, um, Aleda? She says there's the same history, but the name is Mo yes. Mokuana. Yes. Uh, hello. Yes. Hello, my name is Aleida. Interesting topic. I I improve my English, right? But uh, in my country, Nicaragua, my city is Tebaco. Name is Tebaco. It's evolution, the word. Evolution. Before, name is Siwakoat. Siwakoat. In, in Nahuatl. In Nahuatl. The history of the Llorona is same. And my city is, 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 is history. The Mokwana, La Mokwana, saying she, cry, she crying for your baby. She, now, 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 uh, the people say the Mokwana walk around uh, from the city. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Is it the same uh, story that she also, the Mikawana had um, murdered her children and now she's crying for her children and she looks for other kids? Yes, she looked for your baby. Uh, it's same history, same, same. Uh, Espanol, I don't know, in English, oh my God. It's, it's same history, same. Uh, same, I don't know. I don't know who is first. <laughs> Cristobal Colón uh, came, came came Nicaragua in one uh, one thousand five hundred oh two. In fifteen oh two, Cristobal Columbus came to Nicaragua. Oh yeah. So she's saying she doesn't know which came first, La Llorona. Are, are you saying oh. you don't know which came first, La Llorona or Mikuana? La Mocuana in La my Mocuana. city, La Mocuana. Uh, I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, super interesting. interesting. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you all for coming today. I hope I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and maybe I'll show up some other time. It will be recorded, and oh, it's it, it will be recorded and sent out or yeah it's it's it was uh we recorded this and it will be also um it will be attached to the original flyer all the recordings are going to be attached to the original flyer so when we send it back out you'll see the recordings of anybody who already uh, gave a presentation so thank you very much for being here and for learning about la llorona and also the book that shakina is writing about and when is it scheduled for are you doing self-publication or are you no um, it's with an agent right now and um, uh, I and I don't know what's happening. I haven't heard from her. No, oh, but you have an agent. That's a big deal. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. So thank you all for being here. And we have a couple more speakers for March. So please check out the schedule and join us for those as well. And uh, again, we'll put this out and, and the recording will be available to you later and to share with your friends. So thanks, everybody. If you have a question, stick around. Otherwise, we're going to hit stop uh, recording. And you can just chat with... Uh, uh, Shakina at, at your leisure. I will hit stop recording right now. But bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.